The uh, last project for this particular date is the County of Dewberry Emergency Services Fire Training Complex and Tommy Long and Chief uh, Keith Minnick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are here tonight to present the Newberry County City Joint Training Complex facilities. Uh, this picture here is actually the uh, burning center that we have up in Whitmire. It's in a uh, kind of confined place where we can't expand that facility. Our goal with this project is to <coughs> combine Newberry County Fire, County Hazmat, and City Fire into a joint use facility with a centralized training facility for all county fire, rescue, EMS, and law enforcement agencies. Our values that we're striving for is quality of life, put the people first, quality of service, diversity, economic stability and growth, integrity, innovation, security, and strong sense of community. We think this will help us avoid uh, firefighter death or law enforcement officer death or EMS personnel or rescue personnel death. That's something we definitely are trying to avoid and that's the main focus of this getting a training facility within the county. Our purpose and intent, Friendly Station 1, their call volume is heavy on the eastern side of the area. Downtown traffic is heavier than ever, and our response times suffer as well as safety concerns. And Friendly is the department downtown right next to the Opera House, or across the street from the Opera House, if you're not familiar with where Friendly is located. Our Friendly Fire Department, is on Harrison Street and the City Fire on Wilson Road have outgrown their present facilities for future needs. Numerous complaints from businesses and citizens about emergency traffic in the downtown area. Our Newberry Hazmat team presently stationed in two different stations, the City Station, the one on Wilson and the one downtown, making it difficult to gather equipment for response and comply with OSHA 1910.120 regulations that require training and record keeping. Tower 1, which is a shared resource, is housed at the Wilson Road Station as a serious safety hazard due to traffic congestion. The public and to the fire department are responding and returning reports. New York County Fire Service we conducted a survey of all our members, and our number one complaint was by far the lack of a centrally located modern training facility. Newberry <coughs> Career Technology Center has a fire recertification or certification program that has a need of a basic <coughs> training facility located close to the school to help them with their training program and help us develop future firefighters and law enforcement personnel. <coughs> What will this joint complex help us accomplish? On-site fire, hazmat station with equipment and training room to see that the 50 students, future development of a county-wide training facility centrally located, and a burn building training tower in the scope of work. To enhance our training needs to meet NFPA, EPA, and OSHA requirements and standards for our emergency services, better recruitment and retaining of members. Also, will be used to develop and improve the Explore and Career Technology Center Fire Certification Program. And the county currently has property on Riley Road, so therefore, the property will not have to be purchased. This facility will house the following departments Friendly Fire Department, Newberry County Hazmat Team, City Fire Department, and will serve all the county and city emergency agencies. We'll provide a training facility, a burn building, future sites for additional training props to be centrally located, allows training facility for current, currently have around 400 volunteer fire heaven and rescue members within the county. I'm going to let Keith take over from here and uh, go over to the burn building. So. Thank you, Tom. What, what you're looking at now is actually one of the buildings that we were putting in the scope of the work for the joint fire facility. Uh, having a central located facility with the three agencies in one building and being in the centralized of Newberry County will allow people to mutually train together around the clock. 
Um, with the future burn facility, this is a burn building, has a tower, two-story residential, and a one-story burn building. The future development will do confined space inside this building. You have a training tower uh, with future LP uh, petroleum training props, vehicle firefighting props, drafting pit, trench rescue prop. This building would have a uh, sprinkler and standpipe prop, and also in the future development with driver training area. This is actually showing you what the property would look like. This is the property of the county owns that is, um, I don't know if this thing's got, there you go. This is Heritage Drive, this is Riley Road, and this is Highway 34. So Riley Road is where the facility will be located with the burn building on that piece of property and have room for future development for those other props that we were talking about. The way this is broke down on the estimated cost uh, the project is estimated to date at $6.71 million. Um, to give you a rough idea, or, or give you an idea of what it is, the cost breakdown, we're looking at a 21,000 square foot fire hazmat station with a 50 person classroom, training room, which is running at $3.255 million. All the other costs are all the permits, construction, and observation fees, which brings it to $5.785. The fire facility burn building runs 475000 with all the permits and everything that's built into the uh, architectural fees is 925000 If you take the 575, 785, and the 925, you'll have the $6.71 million for the total project. Basically, what we're trying to accomplish is, is friendly, is, as Tommy said, is located downtown. Friendly's been there since the 60s. Uh, they serve everything outside the city limits. So they have to travel through the city to get where they're going or go to the opposite side. What this will do is allow them to put equipment on that side of town, on the, behind the Woes area, to cover the response area on that side of their district. And also allow the hazmat team, which has been in existence for several years, that Mr. Jerry can probably 10, 15 years. 20 years, 20 years, and it's located inside the city building. So we've been housing that inside of a city building that we're looking at now keeping it in the city building, but sharing that with three entities. By doing so, that would give us the room to develop um, the layout of the building. Um, we're, we're looking at 12 bedrooms for future expansion. You was talking earlier about volunteerism. We have a good <coughs> retention in place of trying to go out and get young people. We got the Career Technology Center that we have firefighters that are being trained to the National Fire Protection Standards Certification 2 level, and they're coming out. We're trying to catch them young. To retain them, you got to train them. You got to keep them active, keep them involved, and keep them interested into the fire service. Catch them young before they get into the college area and get into the uh, uh, livelihood of a family, raising a family, trying to stay training. You're talking about training earlier, 240 hours a year. Uh, to become uh, firefighter certified and 120 hours a year to maintain. This will actually give us a round-the-clock training facility, so if somebody can't make daytime training, hopefully they can make a nighttime training. So it actually opens the doors up for a little more improvement with our training. Again, that's showing you a building we went and looked at. Um, when we started looking at this project, uh, the, 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 the funds were up at $7.5 million, $8 million. We've actually cut this project about three times, talking with Alliance, with architects, and we got it down to about $155 a square foot on the building. The building that you see here is Gantt Fire Department that just recently been constructed. Uh, they came in around that figure, and it's a 22,000 square foot building. It's actually the water sewer district, Gantt Fire Department in one building. It didn't meet the intent of what we were looking at. We took a road trip and walked through the building, actually seen the 12 bedrooms, the training facility, um, the um, uh, layout of the building with the base, and it met the intent. So that's kind of basically how we got the prices along with Alliance to, to make that formula work. This building is something that you see in Mount Pleasant. Um, this is a WHP training tower, and it's pre-engineered, and the 475 is, is coming from that company of what we're looking to design. Admiral Ollie Burke says in the U.S. Navy, in the heart of battle, you don't remember very much, you don't think very fast. You act by instinct, which is really your training. So you have to get trained for the battle so that you will react exactly the way you did in training. You want to make sure our people are trained to the level of being able to pull the hose off in the right amount of time, being able to deploy the water to the fire, to the seat of the fire in the right amount of time. Fires are burning hotter and faster today than what they were years ago. 
it's changed for us dramatically. Hopefully by building this facility, this joint complex, and putting us all on one solid ground, being able to disperse out. The ladder truck is a shared uh, entity that we disperse out into the county, so we're working good together, and hopefully this will entice us to move to the next level with our fire service in, in the uh, county. Any questions? Did I hear you? Did I hear you say that the city department would be housed here? Is that that's correct? City. Yes. When, from where would the city? What would happen with where the city is now? We would abolish the Wilson Road station. Yes. This is actually moving the entity about a half a mile away from the current site. You still have the downtown station and a headquarters station out on the other side of town. What would you do with the 21 as it's known? What would we do with the road yet? Uh, sell it. Uh, that'd be left up to council to decide, not me, but that's, unless they got other options, I hadn't heard anything on it. You'd also yes, do away with friendly station. Not do away with this current station. Uh, Chief Pollard uh, Chief Pollard can elaborate with that oh, okay. because of the responding districts. Okay. What our what our hope is to do I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Bob Pollard, I'm the assistant chief of station one. Okay. So part of this plan is to uh, divide our equipment, stage equipment on either side of Dewberry. If you look at a uh, at the statistics of our call volume. Over 60% of where we respond to these days is actually on that side of town. Okay, I-26 is a very good customer of ours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know the the areas around Mount Bethel, Garvey Road, right. and stuff. There have been uh, a big expansion of, of homes, and most of them are uh, mobile home <coughs> parks, that sort of right. thing. So that being <coughs> said, we still have our our response area on this type of side of town, as Keith said. We cover the area. Our area is shaped like a donut, and the city of Newberry is the is the hole. Okay, so in 1962, it was decided to centrally locate that county department actually in the city. For, you know, for centralized response. What has happened over the years? The city of Newberry has grown. Uh, the downtown district, <coughs> thank goodness, is very uh, populated this time. You know, now with the opera house and with with everything that's been done. Uh, we're seeing traffic levels like we've not seen before. Getting my trucks from that building to I-26 has taken longer and longer. Uh, Wilson Road is a nightmare. Uh, we've had, uh, it mentions this in the, in the uh, presentation, but we've had complaints, believe it or not, quite a few from the businesses about those loud, noisy, aggravating firemen making too much racket. Um, you know, and it's a safety hazard. I mean, there's, there's always something going on downtown. What we want to do is to stop that equipment from rolling through that street yeah. wide open in the middle of the day. Right. So dividing it up, we would not abolish this building down, down here. Um, if you make a trip by our station, you'll see we've got trucks parked in the yard. Yeah. It's because we don't have enough room nice. to put them inside. So it's kind of alleviate some of that issue as well. We're, we're trying to do is skin about three cats at right. one time here. So, any other questions? Commission members? One thing, HAZMAC, though, would you, somebody explain what HAZMAC, what that for, good, for the general question. public? Uh, we respond to chemical leaks, uh, fuel leaks, uh, weapons of mass destruction. Whatever happens in the county, we respond to wrecks. We uh, respond to the Sheriff's Department on meth lab raids. We, res we uh, inspect industry in the county, has the material storage areas in the county, and then force regulations on them. We've got about 18 members, well, we've got 18 members on the team now and, and looking to pick up two more. <coughs> we'll have about 20 people. We've got a trailer up Wilson Road, we got our big truck downtown in Keys Bay down there. So he, we use station uh, 21 on Wilson Road as a administrative facility. That's where we have our training meetings and, and uh, personnel flying and that kind of but stuff. But to move, but else. to move a vehicle out of there, even one of you chiefs, to move to move a vehicle out of that space on Wilson Road, 
you put your life in, and you get it in the hands of a lot, a lot of crazy people up there. That road. Believe it. Have you ever seen us back the tower truck into that station? I have. I, I cringe every time. Because Even it's with coming. flashing lights and, yeah. and caution lights, it's, mean it's just human nature. People, people just don't. don't An accident is coming. Them. It's amazing it hasn't happened. I don't know the exact yeah. figure, but the, the majority of our runs from down here, where we house our uh, response vehicle, is on this side. Yeah. I mean, you got all kind of things. People don't realize what goes through that down. We got railroad that's got all kind of hazards. But Graniteville is a good example. Yeah. Uh, interstate, all kind of things go up and down the interstate. That's that's how, that's what I, we do. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yes, make a point about the, the training side of this uh, of this proposal. We, we talked a lot about fire trucks and, and housing those, and that's part of this deal. But our current <coughs> training facilities in this county, as you well know, are practically non-existent. Now, I don't need a Taj Mahal to train my people, okay? We can conduct a training class out in that parking lot if we want to. But it takes time to get your resources together, get your equipment together, stage up the stuff and to do this properly. We have to make training easy, okay? Our training requirements are skyrocketing compared to what even they were when I entered the service, you know? Uh, currently, we have a building that was uh, formerly part of the uh, Monohorn Mill. We call it the Rat House. That's what we use to train, okay? You know why they call it the Rat House? Because it's so infestated with rodents. The urine and the feces has been condemned, what, three times? <coughs> It's been condemned three times. I promise you, you would not let your children play in this place. We have to get on our hands and knees and crawl through it, okay? You know, uh, not poor mouth, but this is a fact. If we want to do a combined, like an interior class, re rescue, red team class, and in conjunction with a live burn, we do half of it at the rat house, we pack all the crap up and take it to a pasture in Whitmar, okay? <laughs> Nothing against the Whitmar people, they built that that facility up there out of their own, and they did great with what they had. It's not adequate. We have to make this better. So the surveys that our, our almost 400 fire and rescue uh, people took, this was a huge response. We need a training facility, it's no doubt. And again, it's one of those things that, well, in I'm not the past, getting you all the past, In the past, uh, all the training usually takes place in Columbia a part of it when you go through the base. Absolutely. And, and this would stop a lot of that and, and keep it from, keep the firemen all enticing young ones to join. Right. It, you keep it locally instead of having to travel two to four weeks in different classes to become a basic firefighter. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And, and we actually teach those courses mm -hmm. currently uh, through the fire academy so they get the fire academy certification locally. We just don't have a facility to be able to do some of the things that we want to do to take it to the next level. So yeah, yeah we have this to will take care of that. This building will take care of that. Absolutely. Yes. And it could be used for other agencies training too. We haven't talked a whole lot about that. But our plans were yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. Our plans were to, to incorporate law enforcement uh, type props. Uh, personally, I mean with the amount of property that the county owns there we could it could be expanded over years, and it will be. It's not all going to happen at once, but, you know, this thing could be, you know, a place for the police department to train. We could offer it for industrial use, for ind industries to come in and do their training. Could other counties <coughs> use that training facility, too, or is it just for New York County? I see no reason why not. We use theirs all the time. Okay. Yes, ma'am. But what you're saying is a multi-purpose building. It could be used for multi-purpose things. Yes, sir. That will bring not only fire service, but other things that will help the county, too. Yeah, this building actually has, I mean, it, it, it's, it's about like buying a car. If you want the bells and whistles, you can pay more. But it, it has uh, OSHA uh, regulations built into it, vent prop for ladder operation, uh, the live fire burn. You can do repelling out of it, confined space, search and rescue. So it, it's a multitask building. As, as well as for sprinkler system operations inside as well. So it's a multi-purpose purpose building, yeah. And the facility, the land that, that would be put on would give us uh, more room to, to create more props as it goes down the road, such as the fire training vehicle simulation prop, the driving course, hazmat props, all that can 
come down the road as funds come available. And some of it's built by the farmer themselves. That property for point of uh, inquiry, that property is, is owned by the Riley property, I believe. Riley, what you call it? owned by, owned by the county. You very county. You very county. That's right. We, we, are, we are coming, we're not going to purchase any, any land for this. Not, not off the list of the Okay. And that is that road behind where there's many warehouses. That's, yes, that's, that's the many warehouses right mm -hmm. there. Any other questions? I got one. I, yes. Uh, uh, standard question. Uh, uh, you're asking for six point seven six million six hundred ten seven hundred ten thousand, right? Uh, in a project like this, uh, is there any amount that would get you started doing what you want to do with additions later? Is there any cost that you thought about that as a, a reduction in price or something that if you didn't get the total amount that you can live with a lesser amount? We, we've uh, reached out to, in alliances here, but we've reached out to uh, several architects uh, and the actual building started out at 200, 250 a square foot. Uh, it's down now to 155 based on that Gantt project, right. which cut a significant amount of money off of it. Right. Um, if you try to cut the actual 21,000 square foot building, right. then you're not going to meet the intent of what you're trying to accomplish. Right. And, I, and my personal opinion certainly is if you don't do it now, it's going to cost you later to go back and add on to it. So, so this is kind of a, uh, this is the price. Just so, yes, yes, sir. Honestly, I really wish there was a way we could do yeah, it right. different, but the answer is no. Is this your only source of money for this? Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Uh, under FEMA, FEMA did have at one time station construction grants uh, that were out there for people in the fire service to apply for. However, those played out, and two, it had to be ground ready and ready to go from the get-go. This actually has the grading and all built into it on that piece of property. Right. But the county doesn't have any money. I mean, there's no other money. Tommy and I, and, and I don't know if Mr. Wayne, anybody want to answer that, but the, Tommy and I have been working on training facility along with, I know Chris has, has been involved as well for many years, trying to find somewhere to put one that will be centrally located and have a multi-use. So um, as far as the funding goes, Tommy, you? I mean, other than coming from the, the county budget, which may include raising taxes to fund this project, that's that's have another option as far as I'm not aware of it. Like Keith mentioned, grants are just not, not existing like they used to be back when 9 11 happened. Now that's the total change. Gentlemen, yeah, would it be safe to say that uh, with the prices, we don't know the escalation of prices, none of us in this room do, but. Would it be safe to say that if we don't move on a project like this, that that cost factor is going, to, let's say, a third more in two or three years? And, and there's a 15% contingency built in, but yes, I would say that cost would, based on the price of oil and construction and the amount of work left out there for people to do. One, one final question, maybe for commission members to maybe help settle the their mind on this. How many people are, do we currently do we have in the fire system and public safety system in the city and county? It's, it's approximately, go ahead, Tom. We got about 400 volunteers, and I don't include the base that Keith has. <coughs> but 400 between fire rescue and handyman. And, and typically that number fluctuates a little bit for right. the simple reason is. You know, Mr. Jerry was talking about the hazmat team has 18 members. Out of them 18 members, the hazmat techs are on the city staff. Uh, the city staff currently now has, uh, I know I volunteer at Bush River, so we have people that volunteer and work. So it's, what I want to say, double dipping. Uh, uh, I'm going to point Chris out, but he, he's the chief of rescue, but he's a volunteer company commander with the city. So. You, you have that, so that number moves a little bit, but that gives people understanding how good we're working together, how much better we're working together by allowing them to work in different departments to make the ends meet. The final question, this would probably enhance, as was indicated by Tommy and a couple of you, people who are you know, coming out 
and maybe not, say they're going to Piedmont Tech and, and studying a technical course, then working in correlation with y'all, yes, then it would create more enthusiasm to become a volunteer fire. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, if you look at the statistics of that 400 head count that we have, you'll notice there's an awful lot of them that look like this. They have more gray than black in their, in their hair these days. Are you talking to one? But, uh, <laughs> no, I know. So the, the thing is, the statistic, 400 volunteers is an awesome number. We're very proud of that. I think we're very fortunate to have that. But the, but the reality is, fighting fire is hard work. It's a young man's game or a young woman's game. Okay? It is, it is not something that a 60-year-old person is, is is well equipped to deal with, okay? We have to work on our recruitment. We have to. If we are bleeding really bad, we're losing people faster than we're bringing them on. Bringing on people is an expensive, it's a time consuming process. We have to make it convenient and easy. We have to make it fun. We have to make it, you know, attractive, okay? or else we just don't get it. Right now, every recruit that we get, we go through about four recruits before we buy one in the States. And that's, that, I think that's a pretty good statement. Well, that was the point that I was making, how important it is. And one other thing that I want to publicly thank County Council for was that uh, they brought in the, the $250 tax deduction this year. So this is something that I'm looking at foresight now of one time of County Council doing things for public entities, uh, with which a volunteer farmer more or less. And being able to have the 250 might not sound like much, but it, but it, it, it does make a difference. Yeah. One, one thing, if I can elaborate, if you don't mind, is asking about grants. And we're talking about recruitment, retention, and volunteers. One thing that is in place currently today, Captain Gene Sheely is sitting in the back row back here, but he is on a safer grant. Uh, he, he is on a four year free money safer grant to go out and do recruitment and retention. What we have found in the past two years of him being on that roster is that mentorship. We now have somebody in place that's not only for the city, but is working for the county. If you go around the county, you'll see signs, volunteer today. He's riding around putting those signs up all over the place, handing out business cards. As a matter of fact, we got a 71-year-old wanting to join, so, hey, that's okay, dude. As long as you're 18, you can fight fire. And so we're out doing recruitment attention for the county and the city. So we're working together to get these people in. The, the beauty of it is, is, is if we had somewhere better to do our training logistically and getting people where they need to be, he's actually training people during the daytime while a lot of people are working. So, so that, that having that avenue there is a big plus, and they got to go. I don't know how many more is going to leave. But that's the big avenue is having that one-on-one -on -one mentorship and doing the program daytime, nighttime, weekend to meet the needs of the volunteers. That's what we're trying to do because going to the academy, if you tell a volunteer, hey, you got to drive to the academy, how you going to get there, who's mileage, who's funding, who's gas, whatever, if you have it centrally located, and they, they say, hey, I missed my training on Tuesday, can I come by and get it on Thursday? Absolutely, we'll work you in. That's what we're trying to accomplish by having the whole county involved with a regional training facility. And getting that infrastructure in place with the equipment on site and the 50-person classroom is a step to make that happen. <coughs> And once again, going back to the last solution, when and the members that were on there, sitting up in there, remember Piedmont Tech, how vital it was. And Piedmont Tech still plays a strong part in what we're talking about on this proposal with five. That they, they offer different things in that area, and that's what's so great about unity. Hopefully by having these spare bedrooms in here will entice those to college. We reach out to Newberry College and try to get those freshmen coming in to get them for four years. We actually had one come through, spent four years, trained, and as a slid arson investigator. So he started at Newberry, but that gave him a, a place to sleep over, get his ride time, get his training. So that's an avenue to have that person. We're talking about paid people in the future for the county. This is a start to help bridge that gap to get people trained to move into that position later on. Well, I, I've said it once and I've said it many times over the past two one cent solutions, and you know I don't use the word tax, but one cent solution, and everybody, you know the biggest part I have, the biggest problem I have with people, they still think it's an additional tax from the one that we are currently on, and it's not. 
It's the extension of this tax. And it's the importance if we don't extend it, restart it, you can ask Mr. Dubose, if you ever lose this and try to jump start it over again, it's going to be hard to do. That's why, that's why the job is tough for everybody you see sitting around in this, on the, in this council quarters right now. That's why you see hey, coming us coming with the one question, is there any way you can cut a little bit? And that's some projects you can't. Some projects you can. And, and uh, this is one thing that makes it a little bit easier. And, and we have to go out, and I know Ms. Reed indicated to this, that they were prepared and ready to go out into the general John Q. public and sell this. It's not an automatic, but with all the things that I ever, anything I've ever been dealt with before, this group and the people that we attract can sell this, any project we have, if you do it in the right way, and if everybody works together. Everybody's not going to get satisfied, it's a known fact, but it sure is a good thing to keep going instead of to stop. It's a mighty good thing to keep going. And I mean, it's a proper time, I, I say it every time I get a chance to just be happy to happen to be a, the fireman, that's why I was talking about this, of being able to cut as far as they can. And I don't want the commission members to, to think that they're trying to build a Taj Mahal to do this. They're doing the basics. That's all I have. Any, any members did not appreciate you, gentlemen? Likewise, we appreciate your service. Yes, sir. I think I'd rather crawl in a burning building than have your job. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do your thing. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>